Whoa, what's that? Is that a video game that works? Unbelievable! Whoa! Crazy! Cool. I have not played this game in about a week. Actually, yeah. When you think about it, that's that's kind of correct. It's not even an exaggeration. Uh, I'm gonna walk back to Mount Pyre and I'm just gonna pretend none of that happened. Sound good? You know, my uh, OBS crashed and my bitrate crashed and uh, VBA crashed and I crashed. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. Well, whatever. The important thing is that all of this that you see here has already been taken care of, so I can just casually run through it and not even have to worry about it. And just enjoy my day. Yep, there is nothing, nothing bad going on here. I'm just gonna head to the next location, and all the trainers have been beaten, and I don't have to really fight anyone. And life is just good like that. Alright. Very good. Very good. So I have Fly now. But I don't want to give it to Swallow because... Or maybe I do. I don't know. Is it a one-turn move? It's probably a two-turn move. Yeah, see, Fly is kind of a really fucking bad move. 70 base power, 95 accuracy. Wow. Wow. I have Air Slash on Swallow. I also have Quick Attack, Endeavor, and Facade. And if you want to try and tell me that I should put Fly on Swallow over any of those four moves, then you should probably just stop talking. So there you go. There's, there's, my, there's my opinion on that one. So I'm going to walk around. And if I need Fly, I will go to a PC. I will teach it to a Pokemon I have that can probably fly. And then I will fuck off. What have I been doing? Well, I was up till four, and then I watched Great Fairy Wumbo, and then I went to bed, and now I'm awake, and... Well, I gotta wonder if I made the right choice to stay up that late. <laughs> the run was cool, but I was so fucking tired. I got to see... I got to see the run that won, and I just... I was done. Whoa, look at that guy! I know that guy, I got one of those. I got, I got anime on the brain, basically. And now I have, uh, now I got like five things I gotta watch. Oh, hello, Ninetales. I got too many things I have to watch, and I gotta, just, just, I don't got time for it all. But I gotta make time for it, because I wanna watch it. I gotta, I gotta watch, I gotta watch more, uh, uh Natsume, I'm on like season five. Uh, I gotta watch the last season of Non Non Viori. I gotta watch the second season of Pretty Derby. Like, holy shit. There's so much. Alright, I didn't beat this guy last time, so I need to beat his ass now. So, this is gonna be a bit of a shot in the dark, but what does this guy have to lead with? I don't remember. I already finished DBZ. Are you searching for Pokemon? You come along after me. You're rude. Yes. Chad, I have a very important question for anyone who watches anime. Oh, fuck. It was Glalie. That <laughs> was Glalie. <laughs> I've been told so many times that Pretty Derby Season 2 is really good, and I... I I watched season one so I could be ready for it, and then I haven't watched it yet. I'm gonna! I swear I'm gonna! But, but you know, I'm just gonna do it right now. There's so, yeah, I don't know what's, I don't know what's good that came out last season. I'll tell you the trash I've been watching. Oh, Earthquake. 
I can talk about the trash I've been watching because I don't really qualify it as trash because I've watched some trash. I don't watch much anime. That's the thing. Chad, I was looking through things to watch and a show came up that I actually watched back when it first released. Armaldo. Um... I don't know, actually. <laughs> I don't know. Exeter kills my bogey. Uh, fuck, I don't know. I don't know! Hmm. Nice. I heard Dr. Stone was pretty good. Uh, My Hero Academia is pretty popular. I've only seen two seasons of it though. I've been thinking about watching it, but it's a lot. Hmm. I'm more into trash than I, I, I want to admit, that's for sure. Chad, I watched a show uh, some time ago. It's called Psychano. It's uh, trashy. I will fully admit that. The reason I watched it is because I noticed that it had a movie that was like pretty highly rated. And it's like, wow, I'm surprised that movie was highly rated because I thought the show wasn't that great. But I kind of wanted to know why it was so highly rated. So I went and watched the show. I was like, wow, this isn't actually as bad as I expected. So, the show is, again, you know, I don't, I, chat, I don't think I need to explain why the harem genre is bad. Because none of it ever works out. Ever. But this one specifically was two seasons in a movie. And it's just about some doofy kid who wants to make a video game. See, I watched it originally because I thought, okay, maybe there's something here. But let me explain the, the plot synopsis of it to you, because it doesn't sound that great. You have John, John main character, right? He, he has a chance encounter in the springtime. I know, right? Big, big fucking surprise there. And then he wants to make a video game. So, John main character gets some people that he knows to help make a game with him. These people are included, uh, are a... Uh, a famous light novel writer who totally goes to his school and is a year older than him and his childhood friend who is a blonde twin-tailed short tsundere girl who is a rich girl who but she actually draws uh, she actually draws porn and they both totally want his nads and like that premise is so unbelievably stupid that I'm gonna get focus punched for it. Nice. Nice. But the thing is, the premise is so unbelievably outlandish that I kinda... I didn't give it enough credit, I suppose. Because despite the pure stupidity of his, uh, the circumstances around it, the show is actually kinda good. Because the main character is basically, you know, John MC. He's who he is. The other characters who are like perfect beings with ridiculous talents, uh, skill sets. But there's also another character who's just a normal girl. She's just a regular girl and she's the inspiration behind the whole game. And she's honestly the most fun part about the entire show. Because there's no real way to say this without it sounding bad, but like... The way she's written is reminds me of like it's like if a character, an NPC character, became a focal point of an anime. And it's like that sounds bad because NPCs don't have anything like to them. But she's just like she's just written to be an incredibly average, like run of the mill character. And all the other characters around her are like super talented, like tropes, cliches and all of that. But like, the surprising, the surprising part about it to me, 
was more so that the actual drama elements of the show weren't that outlandish and even though the circumstances of different characters were like are kind of silly uh it didn't feel totally unbelievable which is genuinely impressive because of the rather unbelievable nature of so much of it and so i watched the first season my only real complaint with it is you know how fan service works. Ironically, the word you call it fan service, but I don't really, I don't really want to see any of it. Like, Chad, I don't know about you, but it doesn't really add anything to the story, plot, or characters if dialogue is being delivered while I'm getting a front row seat to the back of a character's thighs. Now, I don't mean you know I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna diss anyone for liking that, but, like, I'm more interested in what the characters are saying, not what the characters' thighs look like. You feel me? Uh, this should be fine. Like, you feel me? Again, I, I think the show actually is pretty good. I think it had some good elements to it, and the second season was good too. Again, like the re like believable drama. And then the movie. I liked the movie quite a lot. The movie was about two hours long and it wrapped things up. However, the movie, the movie as being two hours long is basically half a season. So maybe it would have been better if it had a third season to wrap it up. But either way, I, I understand why the movie was pretty well regarded because it did actually close things up nicely and it was a good story overall and honestly I would probably watch the series again as a result because it was it was nice it was it was it was surprisingly nice and it's really hard for me to like sell anyone on that because so much of the premise surrounding it is like all right, here is dialogue, here is a booba shot, here is thigh shot, here is so many unnecessary camera angles that do nothing for the plot. But like, the plot itself is interesting to watch because it's not just, it's not just garbage. Like, the characters feel kind of real despite their extraordinary uh, abilities. That's why I liked it. That's why I liked it. I'm a sucker for cheesy romance. I will 100% admit that. I'm a fucking sucker for it. But so much of this stuff always has to go the whole Kya route where it's like to love Rue on crack. Actually, that's impossible because to love Rue is everything else on crack. <laughs> I can't do the pretty boy genre. No, I can't do it. I tried. Bunny Girl Senpai is very good, actually. I really like that show. middle school syndrome. Alright, I'm outside Mount Pyre. Finally! I don't know how many trainers are out here, though. Yeah, well, it's true. If you've ever seen To Love Rue, I'm pretty sure that... I wouldn't call it the gold standard, but it's more like... It's what... I'm pretty sure if anyone's ever watched To Love Rue, it, To Love Rue becomes their basis for all, like, uh... that genre. And that's all I can think about. I wouldn't blame them. To Love Rue is already pretty bad. <laughs> It has its moments. Do I not have the mock bike? No, I do. Oh! I see. So, I you actually need fly here because it's impossible to get to Fortree without the acro bike. And now it's impossible to get up there without the mock bike, which means I do actually need fly. So it's a good thing I fought Winona when I did. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I don't watch things that are bad. Well, I mean, I watch I watch some shit, but I I tend not to I tend not to watch things that are not well rated because it's probably just going to be some garbage that I won't get much out of. The latest thing I watched, chat. The latest thing I watched. Again, here comes more more trash. More trash from Dylan. Ready? Here it comes. <laughs> uh, have you ever heard of the Quiz Essential Quintet? 
It's uh It gotta show it gotta animate it a couple uh got animated a couple some time ago and it got a second season recently. And Yeah, it's it's surprisingly good. Like I thought it was pretty good. It was funny. It was enjoyable, and it was really well animated. So, like, there were a lot of elements to it that I enjoyed. And the second season was phenomenal. But it also changed the MC's uh, eye color and hair color, which was an interesting choice. Not quite sure why. But, uh, I think it's getting the third season, which I will probably... No, I'll definitely be watching. It's either a third season or a movie, but there's no info on it. I haven't seen the end of it. I could totally give you the rank. I can I can totally give you my own ranking. No matter what I say though, you're gonna get mad. It's getting a third season. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, I was gonna read the manga, but I think I'll just wait for it because the anime is being handled very well. So I feel like the whatever the payoff is at the end will be better animated. So that's what I'm waiting for. Tomorrowville. Hmm. I cannot get Thunderbolt. I have so many things right now. I will gladly take recommendations from chat once my log dies down, but I'm gonna be real at you, chat. There's so much that I have on my plate right now that if I start asking for recommendations, it's only gonna get worse. <laughs> no, no. Save your recommendations for when I ask. Alright, here we go. Waffle Wars. Here's the ranking. My favorite character... My favorite character is... Miku. Miku is a sweetheart. I like her a lot. Second. Yotsuba. I flew to Lily Cove somehow. How did I fly to Lily Cove? Oh, I see. Convenience. Third. Ichika. Fourth. Nino. Fifth. Itsuki. There you go. There's, uh, Dylan's certified rankings. I... I have seen the second season. I just finished it last night. Yotsuba... deserves... everything. She's a good kid. I think Ichika is a very interesting case to watch. And watch how she grows as a character. I like her. But I like Miku and Yotsuba more. Itsuki doesn't really do anything. That's the thing about her. And Nino... Nino is a character that I never really cared about. But I can at least respect what she's done. Like, I can 100% respect what she's done because you never see that kind of action taken in these kinds of shows, ever. And I was like, I was so fucking caught off guard by it because the build up to it was exactly what I expected to happen. And then she immediately came back and was like, all right, you know that trope? No, we're not doing that trope. Here you go. And I was like, yo, <laughs> hold on. <clears throat> Miku seems to get the most, like, character development, I suppose. I think Ichika actually gets a lot of development, too. I didn't think I would like her as much as I do. Because her the, her kind of character never really sticks with me or resonates with me. But, uh... She really does go through a lot of different... She gets a lot of character growth herself. And it's fascinating to watch. She's a good character. I want, I want to see more for Yotsuba, though. Because Yotsuba... Yotsuba is, there's a lot to her as well, but since her personality is more focused on the other characters than herself, there's not much to her, herself. But that kind of just makes me more curious what's going on with her, because 
Well, she deserves to be happy. And again, Itsuki's just kind of like... She kind of initiated the show, but then she never really... Nothing really happened for season two for her. So all I really know about her is that she wants to... She, she wants to do a thing, and she likes to eat food. But like... She's fine being her own character, but I just don't think she had a lot of characterization to go with season two. Maybe it'll get better. Yeah, she currently just kind of exists. That's the thing. But yeah, no, Nino is a character. Nino is a character I didn't really like. Like, I basically, after the first, like, three episodes, Itsuki's character basically stopped being, uh, done, I suppose. But Nino, Nino's character just kept growing. And, you know, it... I wouldn't say it's, you know, this is the best way for it to happen, but it did happen and it makes enough sense to me that I can accept it, but I do, I do appreciate Nino's personality. It is, her personality is what it is, but she's unapologetic about it, and I like that. Hmm. Their names are Naka, uh, Nakano, that's their last name. You have Miku, Nino, Itsuki, Ichika, and Yotsuba. Alright, battle me, Grunt. Oh, I know, you tried to join Team Aqua, they wouldn't let you. Well, so I think you can join our Team Aqua. They are numbered 1 to 5. Num 1 to 5, yes. Ichika is number 1. Miku is number 3. Uh, Yotsuba is number 4. Itsuki is number 5. Shit, what do I do here? Bone Rush! I didn't watch the anime since I can only hear Kirito. You know what, man? I understand. I, 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 without condoning nor condemning, I understand. <laughs> I don't mind it that much. I, I recognize voices every now and again, but I, I try not to let uh I try not to let it take away from the show I'm watching. You know, because then it's like I won't be able to enjoy it as much if I think of it like that. So I try really hard to do that. But I don't blame you. Kirito is not known for being the most riveting character in the entire world, huh? We're talking about the guy who joined a gun RPG and decided that instead of using guns, he would take the stun knife, which was regarded in the game as being the worst item. And then he took that supposed terrible item and then he beat a challenge that no player in the game could beat for like two years. And it accumulated so much money and that's how he got all his money. So he didn't have to spend hours grinding loot so he could immediately start playing the game. Fuck off. <laughs> Dio, the role that will follow the VA forever. Well, he did such a bang up job with that role though that can you really can you really blame him? I don't really know how typecasting works in Japan. But uh obviously D Dio's delivery is so fucking good that if you want a villain, he's probably the guy you want to look for. He's so good at it. Hmm. Mill tank. Sky uppercut. The craziest thing, he also, he voices Sartorius and Yu-Gi-Oh! GX as well. And it's crazy to me that he does that because Sartorius plays with an Arcana based deck. So this guy straight up says the world, right? So he plays, he plays the, the world. He's like, the world though, but he doesn't have any like extreme extremities to it, I suppose. He just kind of says it casually as he places the card onto the field. And I was like, that's fucking Dio. Like, that's just straight up Dio. But he says the same line, but when he says it as Dio, there's so much, there's so much energy behind it, right? There's so much energy behind it that it's impressive. Yeah, it's before JoJo's, but it's crazy. Ludicolo. The rain's not out, so this is fine. It's just, it's the same guy, and you hear him say the same thing in two different, uh... Two different, uh, 
volumes and, and uh, stuff like that, right? And it's amazing. Dude's good at what he does. I'm certain he doesn't really mind. Like, I don't, I don't know what it's like to be a VA, obviously, but like, I wonder. I wonder if, uh, like, they really mind if a role like this, like, yo, you're Dio. Do you want to like do the voice of a villain? Do you think he'd be like, ah, oh, goddamn it, I'm D I'm Dio forever. <clears throat> The guy who did Light Yagami is Okabe in Steinsgate and the producer in Zombieland Saga. I knew the Zombieland Saga guy sounded familiar. To be honest, I didn't know he voiced Light Yagami because I watched the dub. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a filthy dub watcher for Death Note. Speaking of Zombieland Saga, Season 2 started, if anyone's watching that. <laughs> the VA saying the world has more energy than I put into anything in a day. You, you could tell when he when he delivered that line, he was enjoying it. No, I only ever watched Death Note once, and it was dubbed. Because that was back when I liked the dub stuff. Mamoru Miyano. I, I remember his voice from, uh, as producer. Because the producer in Zombieland Saga is one of my favorite characters. Because he has so much raw energy in his delivery. Those are, those are good actors. Look at uh, look on the western side of things. Chat, you know, you know Yuri Lowenthal, right? That guy. He's a uh, he's a uh, Spider-Man and Yosuke from Persona 4. He's he does like the same voice for like every character, which I, I, it's kind of unfortunate. Like when I hear him, when I hear his voice, I can very easily pick him out because like. It's always the Yosuke voice. Hmm. I don't really like Yosuke. That's all. That's that's basically what I'm trying to say. He also did Sasuke. See, he has range. He, like, voice actors have range. It's just one of the problems they seem to face is once they, if they have a successful role, a lot of gigs they get are probably like, yo, can you like reprise that role and do that role again? Like, can you bring that character to our show? So it's like, I know that voice because it's exactly the voice you'd expect it to be. Hmm. Gold duck. I need man, just not up front. I don't, I didn't buy healing items. So this is unfortunately the only way I can go and heal. And I don't have Fly on hand, so uh, I can't go back to Lily Cove. Hmm. Hmm. Johnny Young Bosch, Troy Baker. There's a lot of there's a lot of voice actors that you know they have good range, but they hit the they get their I wouldn't call it necessarily their breakout performance, I guess, but like the performance that really uh, for a popular series, and it's like we gotta get. We gotta get that voice. Like, they're, they're not looking for the voice actor. They're looking for the voice, right? So they're hiring... They're hiring them because they do a good voice for this type of character. Hence why it's called typecasting. Hmm. Yeah, season two of Zombieland Saga is currently airing right now. Uh, speaking of anime, uh... Chat, have any of you seen the way, uh, the way of the Household Husband? Cause I heard the manga is really funny, and then it was get it got a Netflix adaptation, and it came out. The first like five episodes came out, and its reviews are like, please don't, <laughs> please don't. Hmm. Matt Mercer does a good Troy Baker <laughs> impression. <laughs> Complicated? Could it- Actually, speaking of complicated, chat, did The Promised Neverland Season 2 finish? Like, did that finish airing and we're, we're done that? Or did that get flamed so hard they just pulled it? Because I don't remember anything about it. I don't remember anything about it. I just remember when it came out, it was, it was so fucking uh, poorly received. And then I stopped hearing about it, so I assumed it got, uh... 
It's finished? When you say finished, do you mean it got 12 episodes? Or do you mean it got like 4 episodes and they were like, oh no. Finished and failed. How low is the rating? Is it one of the lowest rating anime of all time? Finished and finished. Well, The Promised Neverland is actually finished. The manga is done. I need more details on this story because it's juicy. I'm not good with names for voice actors. Same with the like, just actors in general. I can I can't give you names. It is so bad I can't explain this to you in a Twitch chat. You're gonna have to try because I want to know. <laughs> I want to know what exactly was so bad about this one that it, it this happened. I need I need a what happened on this uh, on Promise Neverland because Promise Neverland was a good first season that. I got a 4.6? Oh! <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> That's so bad! <laughs> yeah, I heard they DL Jade past some extra arcs. Including the fan favorite arc, and I guess they changed the ending or something like that. And I heard that the creator actually gave us their blessing to do that, but like, I don't have details on it. I don't know the- I don't know the specifics, the details. A 4.64 on- I'm assuming you mean on Mal, right? Two-thirds of the anime was, uh, rushed into 11 episodes, a lot of skipped con content, and some anime original past that didn't even amount to anything. The finale was just a PowerPoint presentation showing key events that happened. Are- Are you serious? The final episode was a flashback episode? They showed pictures from arcs they skipped at the end. No way. No. No, 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 no. Hold on. Promised Neverland Season 2. Uh. Yakusoku. It's a 5.7 on Mal at the moment. What are the ratings? Hmm. The Promise Neverland season, second season is a brilliant achievement of Japanese television. It is a series that has no reason to exist other than to profit off of unsuspecting fans of the first season. This is the spiritual successor to Tokyo Ghoul Root A, another anime original sequel that attempted to inflict as much severe pain and suffering on the manga fans as possible. Except at least that blatant marketing scheme had semi-decent -de audio visuals. Oh, baby. Oh, God, I want to read this. <laughs> Alright chat, review time! <laughs> the sequel follows female Kirito, previously known as Emma, similar to Kirito. By the way, this is spoilers, so if you don't want spoilers for Promise Neverland, there you go. Uh, fair warning. Emma is also the most powerful player in the video game. Rather than using the sword, she also has the power of plot armor to protect her from any danger. Getting chased by a demon? She can outrun it. Armed soldiers can't kill demon with guns? She'll kill it with a bow and arrow. Instead of getting followed around by a harem, female Kirito has a bunch of children that go along with anything she says. They have names, but don't worry, you won't remember them anyway. Previously, a character known as Ray challenged Emma's overly ideal idealistic goals. This se season, he has been renamed to Hey because he has no weight on the plot that allows Emma to do anything, no matter how stupid she acts. A long-lost friend, who was lost for less than six episodes, returns, but is actually a bitter bad guy now. Shocking, but why is he bad? He explains everything to us because we are incapable of comprehending storytelling. We must be fucking idiots. <laughs> Just sit back and get spoon-fed by one of Season 2's many iconic exposition scenes. Emma and her harem gather in the nondescript room, and one character stands up to summarize 100 chapters of the manga in a 5-10 to 10 minute long speech. It's like karaoke night, but instead of singing, they monotonously read spark notes, summar uh, summaries of the manga with no animation whatsoever, unless you consider a PowerPoint presentation to be an animation. The Promised Neverland second season does not tell a story, nor does it do much of anything. It uses a bunch of unrelated plot points, though dozens of chapters. Years of time skips past by in minutes, then it stitches these barely connected pieces together like a hideous quilt. The entire show rides on how Emma's feeling today. In one episode, she'll let the kids eat potentially poisonous fish. In the other, she'll happily help a demon with its groceries, despite knowing that they like to eat children for supper. 
No matter anything she does, she'll have either a smile on her face or a slightly concerned expression. I don't like comparing the, the adaptation to the manga, but in this case it is impossible to not notice the differences in art detail and writing quality. All of the passion is drained, turning climactic moments into laughably bad dialogue. Villains double-cross each other in unison like a hive mind being controlled by an annoyed writer. They should have explained the motivations behind everyone's sudden changes in goals and morality, but they require hard work and lazy writers don't like doing hard work. Why bother adapting three beloved story arcs from the manga full of battles that would have been very expensive to animate when you can just summarize them with a PowerPoint presentation? That's easy money. Strip away the psychological horror, intelligence, atmosphere, and logic that made the original anime so special, and what do you have left? This piece of inane shit. Granted, I am not a huge fan of the original, but it was light years better than this. The show is dependent upon the demon creature effects, but even in 2D, they are below average at best. It's remarkable, really. Cloverworks has mastered the art of being lazy, and they should be applauded for that. My instinct is to blame the writers at Cloverworks, but it's clear from disappearing names in the credits that they do not want to be associated with this colossal dumpster fire. Oh my. According to interviews, the mangaka co-wrote the anime original story, but that has never stopped a film from being bad. George Lucas co-wrote The Rise of the Skywalker, and George R. R. Martin worked on the clusterfuck that was Game of Thrones Season 8. Just like those ad adaptations, The Promised Neverland will go down as one of the greatest declines in writing quality in all of anime history. The last time I saw an anime crash and burn so hard was in the final act with Darling and the Franks. I heard that one was pretty bad too. <laughs> That's all there is to the Promised Neverland second season, finishing as quickly as possible to cash a paycheck. Every aspect of it is rushed, the staff, the stiff voice performances, the recycled soundtrack is poorly mixed. They reuse the same facial expressions, character animations, background art, and CGI monsters. Even to the untrained eye, it will be obvious the production has cut corners in literally every aspect. If you don't care about quality and want your intelligence to be insulted, watch this remarkable landmark in anime history. Come along, join these personified potatoes on a journey to rebel against Weekly Shonen Jump by becoming the most profitable adaptation while putting in the least amount of talent and budget possible. A journey which they have failed, apparently, according to the abysmal sales. <laughs> another one, another review here gives it a 10 because the adaptation is so bad and the source material is handled so poorly and the presentation is so garbage that The Promised Neverland Season 2 completely wraps back around to being a true blue horror story. <laughs> genius. <laughs> Fucking genius. I love it. All right, spoilers are over. <laughs> Ooh. Hello, Electrode. Goodbye, Electrode. Oh, goodbye, Electrode. <laughs> Thank you, Rebel Panda. Yes. Spoilers over. I'm dead! I don't know much about Darling and the Franks, just that I watched a couple episodes of it. I thought the premise of the robots was fucking stupid, and then I heard that the last couple episodes, or last episode or something, was so garbage that everyone stopped talking about the show. I was like, oh, okay. But the girl had horns, they said. And... She bent over when you had to control the robot. Because that made sense. Oh, I like I like reading reviews on poorly uh poor anime. I think they're funny. One of my favorite reviews I've ever read on Mal was uh the one for Gun Gale Online. There's so much anger and sadness and pain in that review. <laughs> Franks was never that great, but the last start was a complete mess. Uh... I don't I didn't care much for what I watched. <clears throat> I'll be real with ya. Um... I like Gurren Lagann, but I think Gurren Lagann's second half is not that great. And I think the finale of Gurren Lagann is just... really stupid. That was intentional, by the way. So I can get facade... or, uh, guts for Alligator. Like, I don't really want to spoil Gurren Lagann, but Gurren Lagann's first half is really good. Its second half is just a mess. Frags was carried by trigger hype. That seems to be the case for some things. Oh, oh yeah, you can learn that. I forgot. Hmm. Darling in the Franks. People just liked the, the pink-haired girl with horns, I guess. D 
they know how to, they know how shit sells. They know how to get shit sell. <clears throat> Wall ring. Uh, yeah, I'll stay in. Not my zero two. Yeah, what a fucking name, huh? Everyone hates the main characters for those shows. I don't even know if Ichigo is the main character, I'm just assuming. <laughs> but, uh... Nice. Main characters for those kinds of shows never really get the spotlight. Chad, if you've ever, like, read a manga or watched an anime, usually with a manga, you'll see popularity polls, and the main characters... You know, the main, the main uh, protagonist is usually in up there, but they're always going to be behind, like, the the heroines, no matter what. There's no avoiding that. So, the, the goal is not really to make your main character the most beloved character, but you should at least make that character bearable, right? Chat, imagine, imagine your favorite slice of life rom-com. Just imagine, imagine that. Let's say you like that genre for a second. Even if you don't, just pretend for a second you do. Okay? Um... Imagine... Imagine one of those, but in, your main character is is Shinji. From, uh, from Evangelion. What do you, what do you think? What do you think of that, what do you think of that rom-com? Your favorite rom-com, but Shinji from Evangelion is the main character. Kazuma is a great character because he's just... He's an asshole. Wow, that killed... Kazuma represents... Kazuma represents, uh... Just like, you know, he's, he's full of faults. That's that's his appeal as a character. That's what I... That's what is appealing about him as a character, is how he's faulty. He's... You know, he's just a punk-ass teenager, really. He's stuck in an unfortunate situation. He's petty, he's spiteful, he's greedy, he's full of vice. And that's- it makes him interesting to watch, because... Let's be real, chat. There are a lot of main characters in these shows where they're very template. Like, the character's personality can be boiled down to one aspect of their character design. And then it's just every single thing they do, everything they respond to, it's all very textbook, right? <clears throat> There's an anime area from Konosuba Artist's other work. Which one? I'm not interested in watching stuff that's currently airing because I have a bad habit of dropping things unless I can binge them. Hmm. The idea of main characters to make them as plain as possible readers can project themselves onto the MC. No, that's correct. But sometimes I feel insulted by that because the main characters are so inoffensively bland and they always choose the I'm a nice guy option that it's like I'd rather watch I'd rather watch this character's story unfold for them and not for me you know so like to bring back uh, Saikano the, the show I talked about before um, the reason I like that show is because the main character He's not really Dude McEveryman. He's still, you know, he's John MC, but he, in the universe, he is his own character. That's what I find enjoyable. He is refreshing to watch because he is his own character within the universe. He's not this bland template that uh, is being used so I can, me as the consumer, can be like, oh, I would, do, I would do that. I, I would, I'm a, I'm a nice guy, right? He's just a dude who wants to make a game. And he has, he's, there's a nerd who wants to make a game, but he like, he's constantly changing for the things that happen around him. It's not, he actually has character development for things, which makes him entertaining to watch. It's better than characters who will always be able to solve the problem no matter what by a couple of nice words, and then the, the girl goes doki doki, and then, uh, you know, you know how that shit goes. <clears throat> so... I prefer protagonists to have an aspect to them that I think is makes them a character themselves. Uh, this isn't a rom-com, but Natsume, Natsume's Book of Friends, the show I've been watching, it's like seven seasons. 
uh, stars Natsume, and he's just a he's a dude who can see yokai, and like he is not designed to be like he's not designed to be dude make every man that like I can oh that's me if I could see yokai no he is a real character with a real past and like constantly growing every episode and he is he's a good character to watch I prefer. I prefer to watch shows like that that actually look at their main character and create a world for them and not just like, you know, create a world and then insert a character that I can I can pretend to be. I don't like that. I like reading stories where the characters, the main characters are defined by who they are and not what I see them as. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. Point is Point is, i rather the main character be their own character in the universe, not just a character for me as the reader, writer, uh, watcher to be like, that is so me. You get it? Get it? You don't like obvious self-inserts. Mm-mm. I've heard so many mixed things about ReZero to a point where I'm probably never gonna watch it. Oh god, there's so many fucking trainers here. <sighs> I never watched Princess Connect. I heard that that show is not to be watched for its main character. It's to be watched for the characters around them. Which makes sense, because it's, it's Princess Connect. Uh, I'm familiar with that series. It's another one of side games works. Yeah, I'm dead. Second half is really good. See, I don't, I don't doubt that, but uh, maybe I will. Ch I told you not to recommend shit to me. <laughs> God damn it! You're breaking the rule. Is it done? Is it still going? I might, if it concludes, I'll, you know, if it concludes, I'll sit down and watch it. But if it's, if it's still technically ongoing, I, I probably won't. Mm. I tend- I prefer to watch shows that are done, but I, I gotta wonder, I, I gotta wonder because sometimes I'm, I'm really hesitant on uh, isekai stuff because I remember one of the last ones I watched, Chad, I've, I've ranted about this one before. Uh, is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon? Now, if, if any of you been here for a while, you, uh, you know my opinions. <laughs> you know my opinions on that one. I fucking hate that, uh, that one. I gave it six episodes, and in the first six episodes, I was so through with it. It's got like four seasons now or something. Did it get better? I don't know if I care enough to find out. Because the opening to it was just full of so many things that made me think, Wow, I do not want to see anything happen to these characters. <clears throat> but here's the thing. Saikano is also a show that I watched a few episodes of, and I thought, Wow, this is... This is a really stupid premise. I'm just gonna not watch it anymore. And then I ended up going back and watching it, and now I can confidently say that I really fucking enjoyed it, and I could probably watch it again. <clears throat> Uh, you can have Ice Beam, I think. I don't know what's gonna happen. Hestia's carrying the show. <clears throat> that's all you need, I suppose. No, oh, that's fine. I'd rather watch Non Non Biori five more times. Listen, you say that like that show is bad, and you're subjecting yourself to torment. Non Non Biori is one of the most comfortable anime I've ever watched. And I still need to watch season 3. Season 1, season 2, the movie. God damn, dude, that show just makes you feel good inside. It's so nice. It's so, it's so goddamn comfortable. But I will watch season 3. I will watch season 3. Hit yourself again, Luca Nicolo. Dude, fucking hit yourself again. Three times in a row? Go for four. Go for four. Nice, nice. You got a quick claw confusion every single time. And now you're dead. 
Tonica. Is that Tonica is uh is listless? Cause I, I watched that one. I like that show. I'm gonna pickle actually. That's a good one. Uh I really like Barakamon. Barakamon is one of my favorite shows. I watch it a lot. I re I, I rewatch it a lot. Especially around this time of year. It's about a calligraphy artist who moves out to the countryside to learn what it means to create his own style and he's changed by the, the people around him and it's really comfortable. Really nice character story. That's another one of those series that has a good main character where the story is about the main character. However, don't watch the... Don't watch the sequel. The sequel's terrible. I mean, it's not even really a sequel is the thing. It's more of a... It's more of a prequel sequel. Honda-kun. Yeah. Don't watch that. Don't watch that. There's a show that came out after Barakamon called Honda-kun, which takes place before uh, Honda and his editor were like adults and they were in high school. And it basically, it's just a lot of, uh, like... It's just a lot of like, oh, people don't like... It. Honda doesn't... Honda's like, oh, people don't like me, but everybody like totally likes him, but he's like, no, people don't like me, and it's just kind of like a mess, and it totally doesn't have anything to do with the overall show that happened, uh, Barakamon, and it's just like not worth watching. Because when I saw that it had a sequel, I was like, oh, fuck, I gotta check that out, but then I was told, don't bother. It's, it's not gonna make you like things. It's not gonna do anything for the characters. Whereas Barakamon itself has a lot of characters that are fun to watch, and it's just an enjoyable experience. There's a lot of good stuff that exists. And I I usually have these moments where I gotta binge. So I thought I would like end up hating gamers. That show was promising at first, and then it turned into a mess of misunderstandings. Chat, I cannot stand when every single conflict of a show is based around a misunderstanding. Because every single conflict of the show can be resolved by two characters being like, Yo, did you say that? Oh no, I said this. Understandable, have a nice day. That's the end of the fucking conflict, right? He has to recharge, so. I have my face Blastoise. Interesting choice for a dehydro can in there. Than that. There's nothing wrong with misunderstandings. They get things, they get balls rolling, but every single conflict in that show was caused by one of them, and it just, it just got to be a headache. It seemed promising at first. You want, okay, chat, you want to know an actual good show that uses uh, video games? Tell me if you've heard this one. Uh, it's called High Score Girl. Tell me if you watched that one. I have to go heal again because everyone's dead. I hope that's the last trader. I'm getting sick of this backtracking. Never heard of it. Alright, so High Score Girl is a show about... It starts with a, a sixth grader, a kid who's... And the uh, who's good at arcade games? He plays uh, he plays Guile in Street Fighter. There's a lot of arcade games and early video game references in it. That uh, it the thing is when usually when things fall back on that level of like reference and parody, you gotta wonder about the actual quality of the writing. Don't. So basically, he's you know he's he's really good at the arcade, and he's got a kind of a, not a name for himself, but he's he's the a good Guile player. And then he gets totally whooped by a Geef. And uh, the Geef Guile matchup is. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> like, they actually talk matchup and, and stuff like that. So, if you like fighting games, it's, it's actually a really cool thing to check out as well. Um, but yeah, he loses to a Zangief player. And it turns out this is just this rich girl. And then it's the story about those two, like, hanging out and playing arcade games together. And, uh,. 
watching them interact. And again, they start as a, there's, there's a lot of different, there's two seasons and there's time skips and stuff. So the whole show doesn't take place in sixth grade. Like they move on to middle school, they move on to high school and I mean, stuff like that. And the whole way you just kind of get to see this character, this character grow. The character can be kind of a piece of shit, but I like him because he's kind of human. He's just some punk ass kid who likes video games. And like he's got his own, uh, he's got his own dreams and ambitions. Not really, but you know. It's a surprisingly good love story. That's the crazy part about it. And the thing is, the animation. I don't know what to say about the animation because you could argue that it looks weird. But I actually enjoy the animation a lot. I think it really does a good job portraying what it needs to portray in the show. No, it's really good. High Score Girl is really fucking good. I only watched it originally because my friend was like, this show is, a, is apparently decent and it references like fighting games and stuff and we should check it out. And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? And then March 2020, ba bum You know how that goes. So, you know, just a couple months later, I was like, fuck it, I heard it was good. I kind of want to watch it, so I'll check it out. So I watched the first two or three episodes... I watched the first two or three episodes of it, and I got hooked. And I just kept watching it. One of my favorite things about that show is how whatever the main character is, like, struggling with something, he has the- he has an invisible wingman, like the angel on his shoulder. But the angel on his shoulder is just Guile. <laughs> it's just Guile. Guile from Street Fighter. Gives, uh, gives him life and romantic advice every now and again when he needs it. And it's like, you think that's corny as fuck, but it's actually hilarious. <laughs> no, it's actually hilarious. It's really good. It's incorporated well. Does his theme play? His theme might actually have played in the show. I think it did. Because they, it's straight up Street Fighter 2. It's not a parody. There's no parodies. It's all like actual, uh, that time frame. They do like to talk about how Street Fighter never gets its fucking sequel though. It plays in like five different mixes. It's so, I gotta rewatch that show too. It's really good. And again, the the thing is, it's it's a cool show to watch if you're a video game enthusiast. It's from like the era of 1980s, 1990s. Kind of like I'm pretty sure the I don't even think we get to. I'm not sure what the latest console to show up in it is, but obviously stuff like the the real early days of console gaming makes its appearance. It's mostly arcade. Stuff like that. Um, 95, 96, right before PS1. I believe that it's around that era. Yeah, it's around that era, but I don't remember if that's for the time skip or not. That's the thing. Probably before it. Or probably after it, because there weren't really console games. Um, but yeah, it's... The thing is, chat, it's... It's more a love story than anything. You saw Mount Chimney. It's a love story than anything. It's a romantic com a comedy, essentially, but like, it's good. Oh, this is- oh shit, this is the admin. Did I save? Fuck. Look up the English fan subs. There- yeah, I watched that one. I watched that one. Uh, there were- I had to pause the- uh, I had to pause it every now and again because they kept having to put references. Because they actually use a lot of terminology in the show itself. Like, Um, an example, the the concept of turtling, you know what turtling is in a fighting game, right chat? Like, you know the concept of turtling? So, the character will, the characters express like, the turtling guile strategy. Where, you basically hold, you hold in in a, in a way, and you sonic boom, you sonic boom, and you flash kick jump ins. And that style of Guile is incredibly difficult for Geef to deal with. Because Geef cannot jump in, and Geef doesn't really have a good answer to Sonic Boom in Street Fighter 2. Geef's best answer to projectiles is Green Hand, and he doesn't have Green Hand in uh, Street Fighter 2. I don't know when exactly he gets Green Hand, but Lariat does go through projectiles and stuff, but it also is a commi high commitment move. Being a blocky piece of shit. Yeah, so they actually use terminology from fighting games and stuff. 
he gets to the World Warriors. I don't I don't know much about Street Fighter, unfortunately. I know enough to understand it, but I don't know I don't know the history of the games. Hmm. They show the unlimited throw exploit? They might. They also explain how uh, the Goki Zangief matchup is literally 100 0. <laughs> Fucking the days where Akuma was allowed in tournament. So people, as long as you could pick Akuma on the character select screen, you could use the Akuma. But if you fucked it up, you had to play as Grey Ryu. <laughs> My champ. Uh, yeah, it's fine. There was another one. I, this is one I didn't understand. Chat. Uh, the character, the girl who played Darkstalkers. She used, uh, what was the character she used? Uh, it was... Ah, oh, fuck, I can't remember the name of the... I can't remember the name of the character she used in Darkstalkers. But, they kept mentioning this specific, like, combo or move. But they never, like, showed what it was. But the way they talked about it, it sounded like it was one of those, uh, like, one of those cheat options. But I don't remember what the move was. Yeah, I beat Winona. I had actually beat Winona to be where I am right now. <clears throat> the Confusioner, yes! What is the Confusioner? What is that? Is that a special move? Or is that a, uh... Is that just some kind of ridiculous mix-up bullshit? Because the term Confusioner makes me think it's related to it being incredibly confusing to follow. AKA high and low mix-ups constantly. But I don't know anything about Darkstalkers at all. I can't even remember the name of the character she played. Oh, of course you go first. Phobos in Japan. It's a super. Is it? I don't know. I should have waited. And... Hmm. Yeah, I should have waited. For the true intern for Sky Uppercut. That's fine. That's a lump, so I can't pair it. Yeah, I'm probably gonna lose this. Oh well. I'll take you back to Lilico. Oh, I live. Wow. I'm surprised. Shit, now I have to. Chat, this is what happens. It's a lift, makes the opponents levitate stuck in place. Oh. This is what happens when I talk about, uh, when I talk about shows that I've watched, and I start going into detail about them, because then I start remembering what it was about the shows that I liked, and then I want to watch them again. Dragonite. Oh, good. Why do they all have Dragonites? They can still attack, but not move. Sounds dumb. He's a higher level than me. That's fine. I know there's a sequel manga. I read the first couple chapters. I don't really understand the direction it's going, though. I did not enjoy it. I did not enjoy what I read, but I'm just wondering where exactly it's going. All right, quick claw and we're done. Or not. Forgot you could get that. Hmm. An advertiser? No, I'm an influencer. <laughs> Can't believe I said that. Influence this. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. I want to see where it goes, but I'm not going to touch it until it really moves on, I suppose. Executor? I... Can't fight Executor. Shit.
I don't promote things because... I don't promote things because I'm getting paid to. I just talk about things that I like. That's basically it. That's what it means to be stream man. The stream is sponsored by... <gasps> me. Smiley. I sponsored this stream. I like anime. Sue me. I'm a weeb! Oh, please freeze. Okay, there's a chance I can win this. There's actually a chance I can win this. But, uh, Hydro Pump needs to hit. Okay. Hey, I won! Hmm. So, chat, while we're on the topic of Mango, you ever watched a show that made you want to check out the Mango? And then you check out the Mango? And you really wish you didn't? Let me explain. Chat. Have you ever watched Usagi Drop? <laughs> Alright, Knight knows what I'm going at. <laughs> Knight knows where I'm going with this. <laughs> oh. Usagi Drop is a great anime. Usagi Drop? Oof. Anime is okay-ish? No, no, the anime is- the anime is the only good part. The manga is where things go really off the rails. Which is why I'm glad that only the first half of it was ever animated. That was one of those shows that I watched and was like, Oh, the manga's finished? I want to read it, I want to know what happens. And then... I regret my choice. The manga's good until it isn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A simple summary said it all, and I regret everything. Hmm, the manga for Kano is different than the anime. I don't remember there being much different for it, but I I read all of Kaon like so way long ago. Hmm. So the manga the manga is usually considered better than the anime, but sometimes the anime is still really good. The anime is sometimes good enough that you could you you probably want to watch it because there's more uh <clears throat> There's more emotional impact to it, I guess. Like, uh, specifically, Clannad. Clannad is a good game. I stand, I stand by the belief that Clannad is a better game than anime until the after story route. That is my opinion. The after story route is better animated than it is portrayed in the game. Hmm. The thing that, uh, the thing that I don't like about light or visual novel adaptations is it takes a lot of the romantic elements of stories and turns them into stories of friendship because they can't do branching timelines and stuff like that. The reason why Clannad works so well is because there's already an established main heroine. There is an established epilogue story, aka after story, that takes place with said established main heroine. So the, dire the direction of the show can get away with doing what it does and showing off the other routes, but portraying them in a style of friendship instead of romantic interest. Because you already know who the, uh, who the main character will be. And that's why After Story works so well while it's animated 
is because it's following that route specifically. It doesn't need to change anything to be more inclusive to the characters around them. It can solely focus on the events of that story. And it has better emotional impact than the game because instead of reading emotions that are being happening on the screen, you can see them. And the animation and <laughs> delivery is really good. And also the pacing is good. The pacing is very important. Hello, Archie. Max, you got ahead. Thought we wanted the Red Award for certain amount of fire. I now have it in my possession. I bring ultimate objective version. Okay, we're pulling out. Oh, I didn't actually have to fight you. One of those cannot happen. The blue orb, the blue orb, the they separated, they belong together. These men are trying to do it with two orbs. No one told me. <laughs> no one told me. I walked all the way back here for this. Oh, I have to go to the magma hideout. Dude. Alright. Yeah. I'm going. Hmm. Happened long ago. The world was wrecked by a ferocious. I smell burgers. <laughs> What was I talking about again? Chop, what was I talking about? Uh... Clannad. Right, Clannad. So... The thing about Clannad, I've played through the entire game, all routes, and I've also watched the anime. The thing is, I really don't want to spoil this because it's such an amazing... It's such a great show. But it's 52 episodes long, so it's a commitment. Because the thing is, the after story stuff doesn't take place until the th the last half of uh, the second season. But you need the build-up and relationship establishment that comes from watching the previous season and the previous 13 episodes of the existing season. It's long. It's long and the payout is worth it. That's what I can say about Clannad. But the thing is, the thing about the pacing is the pacing is done better in the anime than it is in the manga. Or not the manga, sorry. The, uh... The visual novel. I haven't watched Clannad in a long time. But just thinking about some of those scenes... Hmm. Maybe I should rewatch it. Those fuckers still aren't moving, huh? I need to get the Pokeblock case and we need to go find a Caracross. Clannad is very popular. After Story is probably one of the highest regarded animes of all time. And it's amazing because no other, no other like visual novel anime adaptation has ever really come close. Even though Key's other visual novels have been ad uh, adapted. Chat, have any of you actually seen Canon 2006 in Air? I ask because I haven't. And... I watched like a couple episodes of Air and I couldn't really get into it. Uh, I did watch Little Busters. I watched Little Busters. And... I, I, Little Busters is not a great adaptation, in my opinion. Steins Gate is pretty good, but Steins Gate is also a show that you unironically have to tell people that it gets good after 10 episodes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean to shit on it or anything, but that's how she be. You can't tell me I'm wrong. Hmm. Uh, back to what I was saying. Little Busters, I actually played. I played Little Busters before I watched Little Busters. I played through the entirety of Little Busters. I fucking loved it. It's one of my favorites. Where's the Pokeblox? It's one of my favorites, as well as the, uh, the, the Refrain route, which is basically that game's version of the After Story route. Amazing. It's... That story, that that game focuses more on friendship than romantic interest, and it's really fucking beautiful. Uh, the anime does not do an amazing job portraying it, unfortunately. Can I have a Pokeblock case? Thanks. 
I wouldn't say the refrain route is bad by any means, but I don't think, I think the, if you had to choose between playing the game or watching the anime, I would say watch Clannad and play Little Busters, but obviously that's a big time commitment, so it's a hard thing to go with. And then they had another show that was called uh, Rewrite, which apparently was dog shit in its adaptation. And I haven't played it, the game yet because apparently it was getting translated. So I heard. And then I found out that Key has released another visual novel, which I'm pretty sure I bought and I own, that is also apparently really good that I need to check out. Well, now I have a new game to play. Fuck off. <laughs> Why did I do this to myself? All right, Brandon's in the way. Oh, uh, yeah, he's in the way. Hmm, I, I heard rewrite's good, the adaptation's bad. Hey, it's S for you, I'm running an error for my dad, I'm not buying dolls for a while, I want to have battles, so he's raised Pokemon better. You know you're not gonna lose to no Asprey. I forget what the game is, but I, I bought it. I bought it, it was on sale. And it, I heard it was really fucking good. <clears throat> Tauros, huh? Visual novels require a lot of time commitment. So... Alright, Dale. Okay. Visual novels require a lot of time to sit down and play, which I obviously don't have. Maybe one day I'll do it. Like, I, when I replay Little Busters, I pretty much played it on and off again for nearly 10 days. Just went to work, I got home, and then I boot up the game and play it because I just really like the story. So I gotta check it out someday, but now I do other things. I still have to write a video script. I have to do work! Ah! I don't know how long the script will be, but I, I think I know how I can write it. And obviously I'm not going to rush it in a bad way, but... I want to be lazy! Earthquake. I'm fine. So it was a quick claw. All right. Still possible. Let's see what happens. I'll run with it. Whoosh. Uh, let's see what happens. Venusaur! Oh, Venusaur dies as the blaze kick. God damn it. I'm in lazy man mode. I don't want to work, I want to binge shit. I want to watch garbage. I want to enjoy things. Nice. I want to watch garbage! Or not garbage, I suppose. I don't really watch garbage. Although, no matter who you ask, even the most popular show in the world, somebody probably considers it garbage. That's their business, though, not mine. I used to just watch things. Oh, I used to just watch whatever I saw regardless of what opinions uh, were of it. But I learned, uh... I learned that sometimes you do that and you spend five hours watching something and then all you can think about is why the fuck you even bothered. One of the worst shows I've ever watched is probably Killing Bites. Now, you, maybe you've never heard of that. If you haven't, keep it that way. 
It was interesting? No. <laughs> no. It was pretty garbo. It's... It has, an, it has a premise that I wanted to check out, and then I, I don't know why I watched it all the way through the end. I think it's just because it was so outlandish and stupid and trashy that I had to see it through. But holy shit, what a terrible fucking show. <laughs> you want to know another show that's also like that? Uh, Batum. If you've ever seen Batum. Batum is a bad show as well. It's just so messy, for no good reason. That's what I don't like about it. I don't like shows that are like, rated 17 plus, and then you, you watch them and it's like, hmm, we're just gonna incorporate all these awful elements because it makes the thing, it increases the age rating. The OP is a bop. True? True? You ain't wrong though. But the show itself is like, I tend not to watch 17 up uh, anime nowadays just because it's unnecessarily like grim, I suppose. It's too it's too edgy for my tastes. I'll t I take fan service over needless gore. That's that's my opinion on that. problem. If that was a low roll, I'm dead. If that was a high roll and this is a low roll, I'm okay. I'm dead! Alright. Am I about to die to poison? The Kappa that could! Alright, I win. Ah, oh, you did a lot of raising. Yeah, get the hell out of the way, please. I was planning to go home a little route. I know I'm helping my dad with Pokedex, so I'll go show him. What are you gonna do? I don't care what you're gonna do, dog. Just move. Thank you. K-pop dead! K-pop is gone! And the world rejoiced. Centaur's life? I heard Centaur's life is kind of weird. In the sense that, like... It's... Oh, this is a nice place. It's weird in the sense that, like, this is, like, some real, like, equity issues in the, the universe. But then it's, like, about a fucking centaur girl in high school. I, like, I don't really know how to feel on that. It's so conflicting. <laughs> it's so weird. Then again, I thought Outbreak Company was, uh... I thought Outbreak Company had a weird premise that also tackled some real issues in uh, in the universe. Why am I in the store again? I don't know why I came in here. I'm leaving. I want to go to the Safari Zone now. Hmm. This is Lily Cove. The fun. The fun stops here. There, Wilmer, leap out of the water now. What do you want? You're messing up our training, so could you, like, get lost? Look at that totally secret base in a cave right over here. This dude can look out his window and be like, yep, Team Aqua. If this whole wide world becomes ours, uh, who cares? <clears throat> Alright, I'm gonna go to a safari zone now. Hmm. Everyone has their preferences. I, I've watched I've watched my fair share of trash back in the day. Chat, let me, let me tell you about a show that I haven't watched that I've heard about. It's a show, I forget what it's called. I do not remember what it's called. However, it's about soda cans that turn into 
girls that fight. I am not making this up. Akikan. Okay, the fact that you people know what this is already. <laughs> Welcome to Safari Zone 500. Alright, let's go find a hair across. Listen, I watched the show where a dude's right hand becomes a girl. I know how that sounds. I Trust me. I know how that sounds. But it's actually good. Midori Days isn't actually bad. That's the thing. It's, it's actually kind of decent for what it is. But it's such a fucking weird premise that I could never actually sell anyone on it. Alright, so you have this dude who's known for his right fist. His right hand. He punches people with his right hand, and it makes them go ouchy. And one day, uh, one day a girl becomes his right hand, and she even has booba. I know how that sounds. It's fucking weird. <laughs> this is fucking weird. This is, it's so weird. <laughs> it's so weird. But then he has to go through his life with like this girl as his hand, and it's honestly not as bad as it sounds. I know you have questions, but it's not bad. Here's a show I really like. Great Teacher Onizuka. That is one of my favorite shows. Except the last two episodes. Don't watch them. Great Teacher Onizuka is about 42 episodes long. 42, 43. Uh, and it's a story about a delinquent dude who wants to become a teacher. And it's basically just him being a teacher in a class full of, full of uh, delinquent children. And it's really fucking good. It's one of my favorite shows I've ever watched. Uh, the last two episodes, however, are not to be watched because they are... Oh, an Espeon. That's really good. The last two episodes of Great Teacher Onizuka are anime originals. They're anime originals that conclude the series in an awful way. Whereas the manga continues after that point. I've never finished the manga. Because I was reading it at one point, and then the site I was using crashed, and then it was gone. So I haven't picked it up. I need to pick the manga back up and finish where I left off. But Great Teacher Onizuka is really, really good. And I highly recommend you watch the, the episodes that have been animated up to the second last episode. And then continue the manga from where it leaves off. Because it's really good. And now I want to rewatch Great Teacher Onizuka. God damn it. This is your fault, chat. Stay in the ball, asshole. Hmm. <clears throat> I wish I had a release date on uh, Quest Essential Quartet for its finale because I, it's still fresh in my mind. I, I might end up reading it and spoiling it for myself, but the animation is so good that it, I, I want to I wanna get it there first. Thoughts on Ikamusume? I loved that show. It was one of the first shows I ever really watched. <clears throat> It was full of squid puns. I watched the dub version. Really weird show, but fun. You gotta be squidding me! She just makes a bunch of fucking ocean puns, dude! Speaking of the ocean, you wanna know a good show? Grand Blue. I'm not talking about Grand Blue Fantasy. I'm talking about Grand Blue. It's a show about diving. It's a show about diving. But that's also kind of a lie. It's one of those incredibly over-the-top uh, comedies, but it manages to still be funny. And unfortunately... I caught up to the, where the manga is, and then there doesn't seem to be a new chapter, so I'm, I'm stuck in that. I really like the story, I really like the characters, and the comedy is phenomenal. <laughs> it's a really fun show to watch. 
<clears throat> I think the anime did a great job with its expressions. It's just the anime... The anime uh, should have probably continued on. It should have been more than 12 episodes. But I think the anime did its job well. It, it really painted a lot of those scenes in a good picture. That's what anime should do, right? That's what anime should do. <clears throat> Is it just evolutions in here? Where's my uh, Heracross? Oh, that was a great opening, yeah. That was a great adaptation. I want a season two, but I think for a season two, I just want to see the series continue. The fact that it's still going, I think it's like six years old too. We'll see though. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Air across the post league area. Yeah, I guess so. I, but this is also Kaizo, so. Surely the map would be different, right? Is he in here? I never even bothered to check. I've seen one before. Too far. I'm pretty sure I checked and it said he was in here. That's why I even bothered to come in here, right? Oh, well, he's on that route down there that I can just go down there and find him instead. So, it's probably easier if I go down there, honestly. Oh, Tauros. I don't know why he's in Sutopolis, but we're not going to be going there for a while, so it doesn't matter. Shafari Zone. Wait, there was more? Oh. Why was there more? Whatever. There's a there is a route down here by Mount Pyre that I can check out. I want to find a Scarberry and instead of spending five hundred dollars to run around in grass and find nothing. Oh, but I should probably bring gas. Yeah, I gotta bring gas. And I'll bring fly as well. You're not needed because you'll just die. And Well, there's no reason to ever go on this route, so it's not surprising people skip it. Alright. Alright, here we go. Let's go find a hair across. That's an Exploud, not a hair across. I can't imagine playing this game on original hardware. I love my speed button. Route 123, forbidden to the faint of heart. Um, I need waterfall. Bro! What? Now I need cut as well. Fine. Fine. Who is cut again? I don't even remember. Right, it was Chen. Aircross will murder Ludicolo. Uh, <laughs> I don't even remember what you. I am such a fucking idiot. <laughs> All right. Gas can learn cut too. Shh. Too late, don't tell them that. There's nothing here. That was so pointless. Oh, a rare candy, my bag is full. Get out of here! Just get out of here! What the hell do I need eight lucky eggs for? 
Alright, so we're going back into the safari zone because hair cross is illegal, apparently. No, the egg is not useless. It, it doubles EXP if uh, Pokemon are holding it. The problem is that I, I have eight of them, so there's genuinely no point to have more than six at a time because you can only have six Pokemon at a party. So, I don't know why there's so many eggs. Hitting the buttons fast. We call that gamer. Here we go. Chad, I'm glad I'm glad we spent the last hour and a half talking about anime. But it's only just begun. Alright. You can't save in here. You can't save in here? Uh well. Guess who saves stated when he finds a hair across. Hmm. Yeah, I forgot I could use Sweet Set in here. I need to find a way to get through this. So I'm just gonna keep watching shit until I uh, eventually decide I don't want to watch anything anymore. That's my plan. Unfortunately, all I've managed to do today is uh, increase the amount of shit I want to watch again. <laughs> so, I... Yoikes. Hmm. Heracross Area 4 Northwest. Area 4? Which one's Area 4? Northwest. Relieve your tired feet, rest house. But you put a Pokeblock in the feeder. Uh, I don't have any. Uh, to prove your Stop telling me how to use Pokeblocks to increase my odds. God damn it. Here? I want to keep going deeper, but I forgot to bring a bike. Something tells me that rare Pokemon live in the outlying areas. But you can't get up here without the, uh, the bike. What? But you need... But you no, but you need. Don't you need the 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 mock bike to even get here? This area is still under construction. It's off limits. Sorry. What? Wait, am I an idiot? Oh yeah, I am. Yep. I need the acro bike, basically, if I want to find the fucker. Okay. Ah, yeah, I see. No, I understand. I'm just, uh, I'm just a goofball. Ding dong, time's up. Alright, wingle. Gas. Let me go get the bike. Area 5 and 6 is the Johto expansion. Okay. That makes the most sense. I know Johto Pokemon are in the Emerald expansion, but you can't access it till the post game. So, looks like this is what I have to do. Area 1 is entrance, area 2 is the left, area 3 is the mock bike, and area 4 is Afro. Okay. Do 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 Take me home to the place. West Virginia. Egg. Why are there eggs out here? And Exeggutor is in here. All right, I'm sick of paying you money. All right, watch this. Here's what we're doing. We're going up over here. I'm gonna get on my bike. Yeah. 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 Yeah, smooth. Smooth, brother, smooth. I made it. I'm here. I'm here. Where are the friend? Where are... 
going to catch a lot of our Pokemon trade with my friends. The fuck you are. <coughs> what? <coughs> what? What's that? Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. That's what I brought sweets one sweet sweet scent for. But I'm looking around the area. See if there's items. Watch me carefully. I will catch you. No, I won't. Yo, if you don't want to be here, just run away. I'd imagine the Pokemon would get annoyed if this kept happening to them. Items, 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 items! Calcium! Oh. What the hell? I'm on a mission to find water type Pokemon you've seen home. Do you have any idea where the lake is? What's in the rocks? Hmm. Alright. Can't save, but you can save state, so. Guess. Here we go! Oh, uh, that's the wrong bug. It says that's the wrong bug. Go near Scyther. Yeah, do it. Oh! Oh, there it goes. Tracy's Scyther, the one that was old as fuck. Remember Tracy? God, that guy sucked. That guy sucked. Tracy Sketch It. Oh, man! There's a 5% chance I find Heracross. correct what am I doing what am I doing mm, wrong one how come it doesn't keep track of your steps I guess I could put gas in the first slot because they don't actually have Pokemon to encounter. <clears throat> Here we go. No. Sweet Tosento. It's close. Both from generation two. Uh. Let the suspense take your body over. 
However, now I'm sick of the suspense, so I'd like to move it along. Why are there so many Arcanine? That's a bear. That's a bear. That's an Arcanine. That's a Dawn fan. That's not what I meant to do. Oops. It's an Arcanine. That's a Scythe there. That's a bear. Whoops. That's a Dawn fan. <gasps> oh, it's just a Nito. I didn't mean to do that! I like the concept, the visual image here of me, uh... The visual image here of Oh, wow! Oh, 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 oh. It's level 29! What?! Hmm. I see. So you understand the power this Pokemon possesses. Okay. 29. What a... That's a... It's kind of cock. Road state. Ready? Set. Wiggle fingers. <laughs> yeah, just you watch. Just you watch. The future is crazy. I can click three things and then time warp. I love it. The future is now, old man. Ball, damn it. I got things to do. Uh, it won't even shake! Alright, what if I wait? Alright, my RNG is now different. Or not. <laughs> Stay in ball. Stay in ball. Hold on, I gotta to turn the controller upside down. Alright, there we go. Ball go. Yeah, I don't think so. What does this thing's catch rate? Zero? Hold down B? Alright, you got it. It didn't happen. I won't even shake! Go near it. Oh! How does approaching it make its catch rate better? Oh. Oh. Man. I don't remember my hotkeys for this shit, so I'm just going to continuously do this. Heracross is watching me. Let me tell you who's watching. One, two, three. Oh. Oh, now I'm just being tormented. Ye son of a bitch. You gonna join my team. And your moveset better be what I think it is, or I will zoo. I'll zoo! Oh, why do they run? You know, I think it's funny the idea that I use Sweet Scent to attract a Pokemon, and they're like, yo, what's up? And then I run away. Like, 
It's just kind of being a dick at that point, isn't it? Oh. Well. Now they're running from me. Who's scared of who here exactly? Ooh. There's no way this thing has, like, a modest nature. There's just no way. Yeah, go ahead, watch me. Watch me get closer to you. Watch me creep up on you. I'm coming. I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna touch you. Hmm. I can't tell if it's raining outside or if my eyeballs are screwed up. Might just be my eyeballs. Uh, it was really windy last night and rainy, which is great because I like when it's shit weather in this times. When I'm inside, not to do anything. Cause I listen to the goddamn birds at 3 a.m. And yes, I know it's my fault for being awake at 3 a.m. But come on, man, the birds are chirping, chickadee dee dee, cockadoodle doo, fuck off. Go find a different tree to make a home in. Preferably one not right next to my goddamn window. So this is the stream. The final boss. The ultimate goal. The monster. I'm gonna catch this thing. It's gonna be a bad nature. And... Bam. And approach. Oh. No, it's still, sp it's definitely spring. It's definitely spring, it's just it's rainy and stuff. Rainy and windy. But when the sun comes out, the sun is out. Hasn't been any snow in a while, thankfully. Run. Run. Run! Uh. Huh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ha! can breed it. Yeah, but I need another Pokemon in the right egg group. I don't know what the Heracross's egg group is. I don't actually know where to catch a Ditto either. I never bothered to check. May's expression right now is pretty fitting. They gather in forests seeking the sweet sap of trees. It is completely clad in a steel hard shell. It is proud of its horn, which it uses to fling bows.
Uh, that's not terrible, actually. That's special attack down, special defense up. And Heracross's special defense is actually kind of respectable. So, that can help for dealing with at least one Psychic and one Flamethrower. It has Horn Attack, Facade, Body Slam, and Rock Slide. Motherfucker! That's yeah, pretty good. Alright, so now I guess I have to go to Volcano Town, huh? Let's go to Tomato Town for not we won the round. I don't have any red candies. I'm broke. Mount Chibney, Laverage, right. Woo. Hmm. Alright. Let's do this. levels because the matchups that he wins are non-existent uh. hmm all right here we go no I'm going to the magma hideout Grinding in this game sucks, so I don't bother. Up you go! Go. There you go. Bounce, C bounce, C bounce, C. <clears throat> this is my home. I'm in the cave now. Why is it sunny in here for? Oh, oh it's another permanent weather location. Come on. Again, smear goal. Oh. No. No. Wake up. Nightmare. Wake up. Super Fang. Wake up! It's only damaging move. The sunlight is strong. Dawn Fan. Dawn Fan. John Fan. I think I need to stop. I think I, think I need to stop this game for the day. <laughs> hydro pump I don't know actually if a sun was a sun weak and hydro pump be better magical leave there vile plume vile plume 
Vile bloom. It's always sunny in West Virginia. I hate this piece of shit because it's probably gonna outspeed me somehow. Right, it has chlorophyll. I keep forgetting that it has the ability of chlorophyll. Well, it's dead now, because that is super effective in sun. Nine Tails is a Pokemon that has, you guessed it, nine tails. But like, its name is Tails, like stories. Sunlight is strong. Now, hit me with a solar beam, you piece of shit. Wow. A Smeargle evolution would be worse because it would be Smeargle's gimmick with better stats. And Smeargle already manages to be an incredible piece of shit Pokemon to deal with. Even with its mediocre stats. So just giving it better stats with the same gimmick would be... Ha! Ah. Ha! Ah. I missed. There's only one way I could have missed. I guess I knew you could learn that. Wow! I'm alive! Absol. Ah, oh, damn it. me if you want. Fire, you suck. What do you press fire blast for? I'm a 10 HP, dog. You choked. Why are you choking? What a bad trainer. I hate it in here. I don't want to be here anymore. No. Nope. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Here is my answer. Uh, it's been two hours. Uh, the magma hideout is going to be full of that, and I don't want to play Pokemon anymore. So there you go. I have done enough for the day. This game is soul crushing. Holy shit. Soul crushing. Anyway, next time I play this game, I'm going to have to go through the magma hideout, which is full of sun teams. Oh, I hate weather teams, dude. I hate permanent weather. Whatever.
Whatever. How hard can it be?